How's it, how's it guys? Today we're looking at Frames Magazine and these gorgeous portraits, this captivating image on the cover here by a photographer called Jens Matheson. Matheson? I, I think I've pronounced the surname correctly. Now, when I look through these magazines with you, I don't look at them prior to this. I mean, I flick through them, right? But this is kind of more a reaction because one of the joys of being able to share photographs is that we're not kind of always, you know, thinking about them, you know, overanalyzing. I, I could go away, you know, prior to recording this and sit there and go, well, I'm going to talk about, you know, the, the compositions that are reminiscent of X, Y, Z things. But no, I'm going to talk about this young lady here who I've just sort of seen. And the thing that springs to mind here immediately is, is it is captivating. And of course, I will put the picture up on the screen. But it's employing a technique that I think is overused badly. Now, that's shallow depth of field. You know, we've all seen them on Instagram and all this kind of thing. The, these photographs, these portraits, where the, the depth of field is so thin as to be bizarrely not right. Just, they don't feel right for me. But when I look at this photograph and the rest of, of the work that, that Jens here has, has put in, he uses the shallow depth of field. I think, and, and I'm going to use it in, a, in a, a term, like a more classic sort of way. So it's from the nose to the ears. And then there's some fall off going through there, probably because of, the, you know, the focal length of the lenses. But what this does is it draws attention to the eyes, to the face, to the person, to their feeling, to their atmosphere. To coin a phrase that we were using in, the, in a previous video, where it gives us some character, but without it feeling unnatural. And I think that's the, the key here. One of the, the, the things that I'd like looking at these, these portraits of, of Jens is, is that they are, they feel natural, they feel, they feel real. And that's an odd thing to say, because I mean, obviously, you know, most people's photographs are, are of real people, unless you're on Mind Journey or, you know, one of these AI tools. But that's what I enjoy, that they are tapping into that idea of what a portrait for me really is that it's not a fancy expression of colors and, and cross-processing techniques and things of, of that nature. It is a subject whom, when we look at them, we get an, an, an idea as to their character. And if you're like employing overused techniques because they're popular or what have you, you know, if you're employing, you know, little approaches that in an, in an effort to make your work stand out, then you miss that. You know, you're putting style over substance. And that's a real shame. Now, as I've been going through this and talking, I've been flicking through and then there's portraits of animals. Now, animals don't really get featured here on TPE very much. And this is a photographer called Pauline Fowler. Now, what I do like about these is that <laughs> this is wonderful picture of a, of a healing coo. So that's a hairy cow to, to people who don't have anything to do with Scotland. Um, and he's got the most gorgeous expression on his face. I mean, you can't see his eyes or something, but it's great. What a wonderful photograph. And she says here, a bit of character in my images is something I enjoy immensely. I think that is going to be the word, <laughs> the phrase for this. I'm sorry, this cow is so good. <laughs> Pauline, if you watch these, um, that's that's absolutely gorgeous, you know. And and again, you know, we talked about the naturalness, right? So, you know, her. there's a chicken here as well. What a noble looking chicken, the portrait of the chicken. It, you know, these are, these are awesome. And they are done sympathetically. Again, they're not over, they're not loud. They're not brash in your face. That they just kind of feel painterly. Yeah, I, you know, I do. I've had this kind of, you know, people said this about my work in the past. And, I, and initially I thought it would be a bit kind of, hmm, I don't know about that compliment. But what I do, you know, but it, as I get older, I sort of go, oh, that actually, it works because, you know, it, they feel, they feel real. 
again, you know, you know, we're talking about in sharpness in that video the other day when I was talking about sharpness and how like overly sharp images uh, don't feel real and and the, the 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 very shallow depth of field stuff doesn't feel real, but these images they feel real. You know, I just, I love looking at these, that they, they have a softness about them, or that atmosphere. Wow, really good. Pauline, I, I like that. That's very mad. Now we've got somebody here called Richard Cochi Hernandez. I think Cochi, Cochi, Cochi. Um, it's always extremes. So oh, let's see what this is. Now this, oh, that reminds me of Gordon Parks, straight off the bat there. Look, I don't know if, if, if you're familiar with Gordon Parks. I'll put some of his work up on on screen so it's going to give you a bit of, a, of an idea but that's I think it's the the silhouette of, of the hat you know that he's he's doing these oh yes so there's again very different change of pace to what we had earlier you know these are <clears throat> excuse me photographs that I, do you know I don't really feel where they would you know, fit in. I mean, what do you call them? Street photography? You do, you know, are they, um, you know, the fine art or something like that? It's certainly not portraits, but there is a theme running through. And there are, there's, there's red. Red is a colour. It's a standout. I'm seeing it so far. I mean, there's a one with a, a red cross on here. They're really nice. I like this use of like a very monochromatic kind of feel, and yet their colour. Um, you know, they're, they're wonder, what, a, what a wonderful sort of little idea. And it just goes to show, you know, that, that you know, if you're thinking about projects, thinking about things to photograph, often we think about, you know, people or, you know, or a, it was a specific action or, you know, some sort of thing. And it, often colour just never really gets a look in. So I, I like the use of the red here. It's a really nice sort of look that holds the images together. And funnily enough, I'm looking at, at these and I, even though they're shot in 2019, it's weird because they don't feel modern. If, if I, and, and that's not, a, that's, I'm, you know, they're not slagging that off, you know, but they, they feel like they're kind of from this sort of 50s era, you know. There's this photograph here, the man with a, there's a, a man with a, a yellow hat. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leap to that because my, my son likes to watch George of the Jungle. Not George of the Jungle, Curious George. Um, George of the Jungle, a whole different thing. But yeah, the man with the yellow hat, um, and this is a straw motor. But yeah, wow, really, really again, you know, nice. and I have to say, you know, I have yet to, you know, see any work from frames that is, is disappointing. <laughs> you know, the... The curation on these on these you know magazines is is wonderful. It would be so easy, I think, to just kind of you know film full of just images, uh, you know, but they they work together. Now, I've been talking with Tomash from Frames because he's the, he's the he's the head honcho over there, and he actually said that they're putting together some app or something, which I, I believe is going to be free. Um, you know, because it'd be wonderful as, as nice as these are to have. You know, it. It's unless you have the ability to look at these on a train or something like that, uh, you know, and carry them with you all day. And quite frankly, I don't think I'd want to carry these around because they would get damaged and stuff. Um, so they're going to have an app, which I believe you can sort of look at all the work and stuff. And I know it's not quite the same, but uh, but that you know that, that's kind of a, I'm really enjoying the sort of that I idea. I think you know we we do live in a world where we're all connected with digital stuff, and and so yes, yeah, so, so good. So look out for that. Uh, uh, Thomas said he will let me know when that's that's all live. And moving along swiftly back to the photographs, <laughs> we got um, Eric Mensha, and he's been here in in Guatemala. And again, with the shadows, lots of shadows, lots of, lots of atmosphere. You know, if, if you're wondering what is this atmosphere I'm talking about, um, it goes back to a previous video where I talked about sharpness, where Alfred Stieglitz said, you know, about um, the, the argument of sort of sharpness, he said that in nature, he would want to have, or nature has atmosphere, and atmosphere softens lines. And I thought it's a really good way of talking about images that have a sharpness to them, but they're not overly sharp, that they have some sort of atmosphere. And Eric's photos certainly fall into this category. They are a, 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 a theory. A theory is such an overused word. Why do, why do we think about it? 
but it's it's shadows and in oh i loved it wow that's awesome oh eric that is so so good you see the beauty of doing these in real time of looking at them just reacting because this is this is fab oh i love this picture it's 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 called the magic and the mystery of lake atlian which Again, you have to throw something into these titles. I'm going to struggle with that. I don't speak Spanish. Because um, uh, from, from Guatemala. But, you know, it says uh, the accompanying text is looking like a monster, but feeling less threatening. A tree rises from the swollen waters of this lake. The lake's level ebbs and flows, depending on the rainy season. Now, I've read the explanation there because I'm actually intrigued about what is what is this? So it's, a, so it's a tree, but it looks like, and digitally, it looks like a man sort of diving into the water, just sort of feet up on on the top. Now, this is a good, great example of, of a photograph that has an explanation attached to it, which sort of takes away from the picture. You know, now we kind of know what it's all about. It's it's not quite as intriguing. Um, I still love it. I think it's a wonderful photograph. Wow, that's that's amazing. But I do think it's a case of over explanation. And, and, and it kind of brings up this topic of if you need to explain a photograph to make it work, which in this case, Eric does not. OK, this photograph works without being explained. There is no explanation necessary. Right. But you do need to be careful. If you if you over explain things and you talk about things, then you take away some of the mystique that makes the photograph work in the first place, which is which is kind of what's what's happened here. But oh his his work is 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 beautiful. It's is you know it's, and moving on we have Paul Ray's Ray side. I do apologize and I know people have said that in the comments you know about my my uh, <laughs> my pronunciation of names. Um, you know one of the, the things as I said I, I do these kind of live it's like a reaction video. Uh, you know I mean yeah photographer react to Frames magazine, yeah, but you don't know who Frames is, but so it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, occasionally I do get tripped up by by names, and I, I do apologise if you do watch this and stuff. It, it's no disrespect to you, but oh, uh, hello, Paul, you instant, yes, instantly we were kind of into my sort. This is this is this is very much the sort of thing that I like. This that um, it's very sort of simple, almost minimalist composition kind of thing. Here, it's it. You know, it just goes to show that the most mundane things. This is the corner of a of a, of a chimney breast with a you know with with a oh I've totally forgotten the word for these things. If you know what the word for this a mantelpiece <laughs> in the comments below, um, you know then just yeah look at them. They're wonderfully wonderful sort of ideas, and um, you know I, I've it feels I, I see in his photographs length. Right. So as I've been flicking through here, that his photographs are all <clears throat> they're all quite long. Right. So they've got, they've got a long sort of thing, which is kind of a weird sort of thing to say. You know, they're all long, more in portrait orientation. But the, the compositions make them feel tall. You know, like that one again. Look at that, you know, that framing. You know, this this is I think, you know, just a, what a wonderful example of, you know, having I think a, a clarity of thought about how you can make something feel elegant. I think elegant might be a, a, you know, the right word. I, I feel an elegance in his photographs. What a what a what a, a, a gorgeous sort of looking sort of set of photographs. And and this this see you know we talked about it being intrigued. This one. Okay, that I, I I will definitely put this up on the screen if I can find them because you know in the past I've looked at some of these for some of these photos and I can't find them which is disappointing. Um, but this this particular image so there's there's like a Renaissance kind of painting. Then there's a piece of silverware and there's a table with what looks like a you know like a buffing machine on it. And aha, there we go. So I was asked to photograph a silversmith who lives in a Victorian chapel in Wales. And that would explain all this stuff, why there's a, a you know, buffing machine there. But what an interesting contradiction, or the contrast, because often when we think about, you know, people who are like artisans, you know, hands-on things, very dirty, uh, say, well, messy environments and stuff. And yet th this is as clean as as clear as you possibly could find. And yet there is <laughs> a buffing machine, you know. Uh, so it just, wow, I think it looks, it looks really, really lovely. 
And uh, yeah, so one of a great selection of photographs. I really like his his work. And then there's there's one that puts me a little bit in mind of, of Desiree Doran. And and we do have um, shutters in our house and some panelling somewhat similar. In fact, off to off to the side, you can't see it. Um, I, I just wish it looked that um, elegant. <laughs> ours, ours does not. It's it's looking a little bit a little bit worse for wear. Um, but still nice. It's got character. It's quite atmosphere. Right. Oh, wonderful stuff. So, you know, these are, I, I think if you can, you know, find them, if you can get them on board with, um, you know, Frames Magazine, there is a link in the description box below where Tomash has, has very kindly given us a discount for watches of TPE to, uh, to go and enjoy, you know, his, his images. And, and as always at the back, and I, I do apologize because I've flicked over them. Um, there are some some more sort of digital images which I I do like, um, but they're not you know they they have that painterly sort of feel. But I, I have to admit that I'm not a massive fan of this kind of photography, um, which is you know some compositional sort of stuff. Um, uh, you know that, that looks like a painting. I would much rather have a painting like that uh if you know then that seems i'm slightly unfair on on michael so it's michael raymond the the, the artist here it, it just yeah this i think this is probably my only sort of <clears throat> I, 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 I i'm gonna leave that cough in because I'm, I'm sort of saying is it that's my only misgiving about about this is that this particular kind of digital work while it's interesting and stuff i don't think it really has a place next to some of the the wonderful images here but but you know but that's that's personal choice that's a that's a taste thing for me uh, nothing against digital you know you know digital image creation it's just these feel like they want to be paintings so, so there we go anyway you know i really hope you enjoyed this this look at you know frames magazine and if you want to see more of frames magazine check out this video over here thank you ever so much for watching and i will see you again soon